Hello, I'm Edrilisim, and welcome to Aurora Forex, where today we are going to be, hopefully, starting to explore outside of our solar system. We are going to be working on trying to get some jump drive technology, working out what jump points actually are, um, figuring out if I've got enough of them in the solar system to actually go anywhere, and also starting up some extra Earth colonies. Extra Earth? I mean... Extra solar would be a different solar system. I guess it is extra planetary. Extra planetary. So there we go. Colonies. Uh, so we are going to just advance time a little bit so that we have two of our freighters that are ready. And we're going to go give them some orders. Now we're going to need them to go and ship infrastructure. So firstly, let's find out how much infrastructure we actually have. We have sitting on Earth infrastructure. 1,001. All right. Now... The question is, how much infrastructure can you fit in a cargo hold? I believe the answer is like 10. Now, to check this, um, we can bring up one of the resources I talked about really early on. Which is... This. I'm going to have a look at infrastructure and it says 2.5k. Um, a cargo hold will hold 25. So, yeah, we can fit 10 infrastructure into a cargo hold. We probably want 1,000 infrastructure. Minimum on each of the moons. We don't have that. So for now, we're going to send 100 over to each moon or something. You know, 10 trips with a freighter. That's fine. So we are going to go over to our wrong one. Here we go. I'm going to say, Gray, we would like you... Oh, click the fleet, not that one. Um, that's for if you want to, like, do stuff with the ship individually. That's the fleet. Yes, they have the same name. Might be slightly confusing. Uh, we're going to load installation. We'll load infrastructure. We will then tell you to go to Europa. Unload all inf uh, installations. And then go back to Earth and refuel. Now, you might be like, hey, you want to do that 10 times? That's a lot of clicking. Yeah, but we can just go and we can type down here 9, repeat order. And it's going to do that 10 times now. That's simple enough. We'll do the same here. Earth, load installation, infrastructure, go to IO, unload, go to Earth, refuel and resupply, and then repeat orders. Bam. If you don't put refuel and resupply in, it'll go and do that and then go, ah, need fuel. So this kind of helps and makes it a bit easier on you uh, because it will be at Earth anyway when it's going to be loading the infrastructure. You could tell it, you know, standing orders, but that'll kind of get in the way and mess things up a little bit. It'll be easier just to refuel every time. Um, you are busy, though, so you can't do that just yet. We'll do that in a minute. So, with that said, we're going to skip forward to time. I'm going to do five days at a moment just so you can see them start to travel. They're going all the way to Jupiter. Oh, the slow little engines pootling along. All right, and Gray has finished. Um, we're going to tell you to go to Earth, load installation, and I think for this one, we could just tell you to do automated mines, right? We've got 93 of them sitting there. Yeah. We're actually not going to tell you to go to Callisto. We're going to load automated mines. We're going to take them to Wolf. We're going to unload an automated mine, and we're going to go back to Earth and reload and refuel, and then we'll do that nine times. Now, the key part here is is that instead of taking 10 at once, we're only going to be taking one because automated mines are 25,000 cargo points. You can get one automated mine in a 25,000 point cargo hold. So easy said, that's going to be 10 automated mines. Uh, we do need to target those. I think Wolf, we didn't target last time. So please target... And we have everyone else correctly targeted. All right, great. I wish you could just target everyone at Earth with like one click. Because that's pretty much what we're going to do in every solar system. You want to target one, one planet in particular. And that planet will be where we pick up minerals. Or we use them, as is the case here with Earth. Uh, right. That's said and done. We're going to fast forward to 30 days at a time. Okay, we've finished improved nuclear pulse engine technology, which is brilliant. We'll click back on Earth, um, and we'll go to research. Our propulsion. Here is jump point theory. Um, we will want to grab that. Uh, 
and we'll want to grab some of the buffs here like fuel consumption uh maybe reduction in the engine power because the less powerful your engine for the same size the more efficient it is and yeah i think we'll want to grab those for sure but we can do this while we're researching gravitational sensors which is the thing we need jump point theory to research like you need to know what jump points will conceptually be to know what sensors you need to look for them so we're going to quickly grab jump point theory that will take us two years actually not as bad as i feared it could be um would it be worth transferring some people to work on jump uh not jump research rate just like take a couple off there and work you on here Eh, probably not. Jump point theory is something that we're going to need to, you know, firstly, do more power and propulsion research and also then, you know, sensors, etc. So that seems reasonable for now. We do have some other research ending soon, so we can use that. Okay, fast forward to time. And... Uh, Dracos Heavy Industries in construction has completed its expansion. It's now 7,000 ton capacity. Uh, do we want to increase that anymore? Probably not. How long would adding a slipway take? Until 45. Yeah, that's acceptable. Uh, we're going to probably want to start building our new ship somewhere around 45, 46. So that's fine for now. And... Fuel storage is coming up. Yeah. And science team led by Tetsuo Duncan working on Earth has completed research into fuel storage. Very large. Hi. Right, great. Now, we could just reassign those people. Or we could start working on another thing. And I kind of am tempted... To work on something like ultra large fuel storage would be useful for fuel tankers. Um, orbital habitat, useful for making like huge habitats that we can say put above Venus so Venus can actually be mined. Um, refueling, again, tankers. Trans Newtonian cargo shuttles, that is basically a just, it's a futuristic shuttle and it's twice as good as our current shuttles, which will cut our loading time. I'm pretty tempted to start working on that and I think. That we should just dedicate like one research lab for now. It will be useful for freighters, which hey, we do want, but we can always like upgrade our freighters. Like we can modify them after the fact. So um our other two I'm gonna put on research rate. Because again, more research rate, better for everyone. Well, for us. Not as good for you know the non-player races out there. And we will hit forwards in time. Grey one's completed orders. Uh, we could build the other three greys. They're going to be outdated pretty soon, but we can still use them. We have the components, I believe, in our stockpile. Yep. So we'll build those, send them to the colony fleet, uh, cargo fleet. One, two, three. And Grey one is bored. Grey two and Grey three are going to take another year. Grey one, yeah, do you want to just go and do more automated mine setup? Like, you seem pretty down with that. Load installation. Automated mine. Go to Wolf. Ah, here we go. It's now at the top because it's got 10 automated mines. Unload. Fuel. Repeat. And we should see, here we go, mineral packet. If we advance time by like an hour, you'll see the mineral packet being shot at incredible speeds, 42,000 kilometers per second towards Earth. Good job we can catch that at the other end, or that would cause some serious damage. And... Ooh, a little bit of a slowdown there. Alien's doing something interesting. Okay, we've got the three new greys. Um, we're just going to refresh over here and we should have them pretty much ready to go. We could give them orders. You know what? We haven't sent any infrastructure to, I think it was Callisto, and we want to send a little bit. We could just tell them to play catch up. 
they could probably, because there's three of them, ship everything in the same amount of time. Now, I'm going to detach them from cargo fleet, but I'm going to put them all into this new fleet. And for the sake of this, we're actually going to rename the fleet, and we're going to call it FT Gray um, times, ten, uh, times 3, which is the number in the fleet, and then we're going to call this fleet 1. So FT Gray, so it's telling me what is in there. It's grays times 3, 1. So this is the first of our cargo fleets. Um, and we're going to tell you to go to Earth, load installation, load a infrastructure, go to Callisto, unload, and then do this. Um, we're not going to say a lot. Oh, we also need to refuel Earth. Whoops. We're going to do it twice more, which means you'll do it three times of three, so you'll have 90 infrastructure. Both the others are going to have 100, which is annoying to me because it's not going to be perfect, but whatever. Uh, we can make it work. Right, we've added some slipways to both of you. I do want to keep going with this. I kind of want to get the slipways up to five each. Yeah. And everything is on target. Jump point theory will be done May next year. Okay, this is good. Um, what's our industry doing? We're almost up to a thousand construction factories. What's our mining doing? <laughs> this is the question. With this neutronium, um, we're producing. Uh, ten thousand. Okay. So Orange is saying, hey, you're using this up quicker than you are producing it, I believe. So although we've still got a load in the ground, I don't think we're going to be able to keep up with that. That said, whatever, we'll make it work. Automated mines to some places, etc. We'll figure something out. Uh, Gray one has completed orders. You know what? We can make it even. Um, load installation. Load me infrastructure. Then go to Callisto. Unload all installations. Go to Earth. Refuel or supply. And that, in theory, should mean there'll be 100 infrastructure on each of the three Jovians. Right, Grey 1's completed orders. Grey 2's nearly done. Grey 3's nearly done. And the fleet is 37 days out. Okay. We can put them together as one unit. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shift. Um, I think. Yeah, we're going to shift these in here. So we've got five greys in one fleet. And then we're going to keep this gray 001 separate. And I've got a very easy job here. We are going to basically look at Earth. We're going to say, hey, how many mass drivers you got? 12. Um, I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Mmm. Mmm, it's, it's almost there. It's so almost there. Uh, we will need more mass drivers, though, so... Um, I'm gonna modify that. Oh, right, click mass driver, change the number, click modify. There we go. It's a little bit of a pain, but you get used to it. I'm going to run down our construction factories again on the basis of we're going through a kind of a crunch period on Neutronium. We can go down to 50%. I don't want to go lower than 50. But, and then we up the percentage worker mass drivers and they will be done. Uh, yeah, three years and we should be safe to start chucking them around the solar system. I'm simply now going to do a very, very boring thing and I'm going to go, hey, Gray, you go to Earth. You pick up an installation. It is Mass Driver. Now I would like you to go to, does it say, Borley. I would like you to unload the Mass Driver. I want you now to go to Earth, and I want you to refuel and resupply. And I can't repeat this, because otherwise it will keep going to Borley, and I won't be able to change that. Um, You can't just click to change that order is fixed so I'm gonna have to go hey I would now like you to go to Brooks I would like well sorry I would like you to pick up installation first of all uh, I would like you to load a 
mass driver. And then I'd like you to go to Brooks. And then I'd like you to unload. And then I'd like you to come to Earth. And I'd like you to refuel and resupply. I mean, not that you need to resupply really. But yeah, this is the idea. This is going to take me a few iterations to do. And it's going to be annoying. Oh, also, I was totally wrong last episode. I don't know why I said it, but freighter don't need to touch deployment time. That can be three. If it's lower than three, then it doesn't work. But if you set it to three, you don't need to worry about deployment time for freighters. Morale doesn't affect them. People are just like, I live on a freighter. This is fine. Um, don't bother touching that. It takes up extra weight. Not that it really matters so much, but you shouldn't be doing that. I don't know why I did. I know that. I knew that going in. Um, but, you know, we all have these dirt moments. Anyway, I'm going to just do this for many more planets and I'll get right back to you. Okay, fun fact, I would actually don't need to do this uh, for more places because look at the travel time. This is so slow, it's going to take us ages. So I'm actually going to remove that last one because it's a comet that's a little bit further out. Um, wow, it's going to take ages just to get to Borley and Brooks. I believe it's because Brooks is quite far out, right? Yeah, Brooks is the issue here. Yeah, we probably shouldn't be sending you off to Brooks. In fact, almost anywhere except for Brooks and Sedna would be fine, but the trip up to Brooks was going to take about eight years, which is a little silly. Okay, so uh, I've set it up to go everywhere but Sedna and Brooks. Obviously, Sedna is a little bit further out. Um, I considered that uh, Herschel Rigelet, Rigelet is, is fine. Brooks is just a no. Uh, and that will still take you, what, like four years? And that doesn't quite include a lot of the trade time between, you know, being in orbit, sending stuff down. So, yeah. That's going to take about five years. That's fine. Um, this five, we have infrastructure on these planets. Now, because of that, we can have a look at, say, Europa. And we can go over here and it'll say, hey... Um, infrastructure per million population. Well, we need 630 infrastructure to have 1 million population there. We have 100, so we can have 0.16 million population. Well, luckily enough, we do have a very helpful PNG. Which says, well, if you want to put a mine on the planet, it will need 0 0.05 million workers per mine. So 20 mines would need a million population. That's not much. Okay, we need a far more infrastructure than we've got at the moment. Again, we've been moving small potatoes so far. So we're going to start moving a little bit more infrastructure with the greys. Uh, first things first, so we will send them to Wolf with a few more automated mines because that's kind of important to us. So we're going to load automated mines from Earth, go to Wolf, unload all. And we've got 20 at the moment. We want another 30 to get up to 50. Uh, that'll be six trips because there's five of them. Five sixes is 30. So we'll do that five times. Oh, we want to refuel though. And then we're going to tell them to ship more infrastructure. And luckily, it's only going to take them about half a year. Also, I do need to promote people to be in charge. Um, oop. And then we select commercial ships and nothing above night. Ooh, you're commanding officer. Nice. Uh, we'll assign Aaron Steele, Michael Lyons, Sophia Haley, and Russ Void Singer. The Great House Void Singer. Um, is this uh, Russ Void Singer? There we go. Adventurous, distant, uncaring, and risk taker. Perfect for a freighter captain. Right. Let us let you do your thing. Oh, we just finished Slipway. And your research is now 40%. That's really good. Sam Steven. Uh, you know what? Let's you go have a quick look at Sam Steven. Science. I would like you to be a story character. Unappreciative, superstitious, ignorant, and academic. Hmm. Okay. You can command up to 29 labs. There is a limit on the number of labs each scientist can do. 29 for you and 40% buff which again times four if you're in your right field we're gonna get uh 2.6 times the research speed when we're using you and if we pop over here we can be able to see that 
Yup. So good. That can go up to 50%, by the way. So we'll get a three times multiplier. Fantastic. Right. We want to have a look at our shipyards. And we're going to want Lycan boat builders. 88. We don't need more slipways for you, really. You're going to be big, heavy commercial ships that we don't need a lot of. So I'm thinking maybe we make you 100,000 tons. Like really chunky ships. Maybe 105,000 tons. So we'll do continual capacity expansion. That way you can cancel it partway through. If you tell it to do a certain amount, like do 2,000 tons, if you cancel it, it will cancel everything. If we do continual, it's continually adding a bit. And if you cancel it, you'll have gathered everything up until then. Like it will still have grown. So do your thing. That said, it won't tell you completion date, which is annoying. Uh, right. Oh, we have an interactive research lab. That'll be because we built a new one. And I'm going to put you on our research rate. And there we go. We've got jump point theory, which is beautiful. Now, jump point theory means, hey, we know how jump points should work. Now let's figure out how to actually build the jump drives. Uh, we will need a jump drive efficiency. That's the efficiency of jump drive. We'll also need a squadron size, which is the number of people you can jump with you. If you don't have that, you don't just jump yourself. You just can't. You can't jump anyone, uh, sadly. So we need to understand about jump size for the squadron and also jump radius, which again we need. But that is the distance at which you will come into real space on the other side after coming out the jump point. You actually want that to be large because... It's easy to defend a jump point. You just sit like a whole like battalion of ships on the jump point. People come out the jump point and they're kind of disoriented and you shoot them and they die. Um, being able to come out a further distance away means you might be out of weapons range. So generally, that's useful. Uh, we're going to need that. You can't do without it, sadly. So we're going to need all three of these. Now, we could send multiple people to do it, but it'd be less efficient. It's more efficient just to do them all at once. So um, sorry, not all at once, uh, all after each other. So we're going to get efficiency first. Sam, with your ridiculous bonus short. That's fine. Um, if we want to transfer anyone else. I think we can maybe take one off composite armor. Yeah, it's probably more efficient just to hold on to that. Actually, yeah, we'll take one off composite armor to put on the science department. Because we need the science department to be done because that sensors and control and that is also the people who will research our gravitational sensors which we need to find our jump points. So we're going to pass the time a bit more. Uh, we have completed sending all of our automated mines over to Wolf. Lovely. Got 50 there now. Right. We're going to need more infrastructure. So load infrastructure. Then... Let's do this one at a time. We're going to do Europa. We want to get that to a thousand. We've got a hundred there. It needs to be a thousand. We're going to unload all installations and we're going to come back to Earth and we're going to resupply and refuel. Hell, we could do this for all the three if we wanted. We could go load installation, load infrastructure. And it was the mandate of the ruling party that we actually do three Jovian colonies as like a, a first step beyond earth so with that said uh the galactic future party have made themselves clear we're gonna go to callisto unload all installations refuel and resupply load infrastructure and then we're gonna go to io and that will be the last one refuel and resupply so, that's going to take 180 days. This is going to be quite a long-term project. We need 900 at each place. You can transfer 50 at a time, which means that it will be 18 trips to each of them. And this is one batch. So, 18. We need another 17. Again, quick maths. I'm probably getting this wrong. It's going to be a 10-year mission. Um, we will probably have freighters well before the end of that 10-year mission. And our new freighters will be faster. Much faster. Probably four times faster. But, you know... The Greys are doing their job. They're filling this interim role. In fact, they're very important. Right now, they're getting us quite a lot of neutronium. If we actually have a look at Wolf, we'll be able to see that. Yeah, producing 600 neutronium. 
Earth's producing a little over 9,000. But then again, we do have, what, how many mines? 600. And also a bunch of auto mines that we haven't shifted. 50 of them. Yeah, we could do a moving them at some stage. Again, no freighters. They're busy. Oh, hello. Time's slowing down there. Now, bear in mind that the AI, uh, the two races that are out there, this is meta knowledge right now. Remember, we don't know this in game. The two races that are out there are probably well advanced and going and exploring many other solar systems and stuff. So we're definitely behind. Right, we've just researched our science department, which will speed up our research when we're out and doing uh, geo survey and gravitational survey. So we need to do our next step, which will be to go and Gravitational survey sensors. Yes, please. And you'll be done 47. Yeah, this is going to be running quite close to the margin. I don't know whether we'll have our exploration ships out this episode before the next election, which is going to be 2050. But the ground is set. Okay, jump drive efficiency four. Lovely. Let's do our next power propulsion. Um, we need max quadrant size. We can take one person off of composite armor, maybe. Eh, no. We need to just run them until they're done. We should be fine. Uh, the research rate will help when we get that. I probably should color code these events. You can do... Make them stand out, the ones that matter. Obviously, a lot of these don't matter as much to us. Oh, hello. Ooh. Research 30%. Admin research. Uh, that's the number of factories. Uh, research labs. Yeah, that's nice. Um, promoted, promoted. Slip weight added. Lovely. We can now do four at once of... The 40 packs, which admittedly won't be building any more of those. Um, I think we might do a continual capacity of just go to like 8,000. I don't know if we'll use it or not. But it's better to have that just in case. I don't want to be having to adjust the sit way while we're waiting to build our new ship. And we will fast forward to time again. Continual capacity for the Lycan boat builders is done. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty huge. Now, we don't actually need to wait for our jump drives to be done to build our new class of freighters, do we? Just thinking about it, we don't need a jump drive on those. Those are going to be just operating the solar system for quite a while. And hell, when they go out of the solar system, it's probably going to be places that we've already stabilized the jump points, so they don't need a jump drive for that. We could start building them now. Now, we are close to our new armor, which will make them lighter. So we probably want to wait for that, but we don't need to wait for the jump drive stuff. So maybe we should be mainlining the composite armor. We'll be done soon enough. Uh, I might take one person off the jump drives temporarily to put onto composite armor. Just bring it back to April. Okay, we did our max squadron jump size. Propulsion. And we need jump radius. Luckily, that's only a thousand research points that'll be done really quick. In September this year. Nice. Okay. We've researched composite armor, which is lovely. Now, the next level up, ceramic armor, is 10,000. So we're probably not going to be going for that too soon. I will say we'll run it with like one person on it just so that we are doing it and i think we're also going to dump the rest of our research labs into our power propulsion because we also want to get some adjustments to our you know what let's cancel that project because thinking about it we do need that for exploration vessels but what we really need for our freighters is better engines so we'll need that for exploration vessels as well. We might as well do that now. Minimum engine power, yes. 
less powerful engines, but much more efficient. They can go further. They don't need to refuel as much. And they save us some fuel. And that'll be done pretty quick. We want that for exploration vessels anyway, because they need to be fuel efficient. Exploration vessels going to be away for quite some time. Uh, we've added some slipways. That's lovely. Uh, I think we'll probably just keep that done. We don't need to build more slipways. Five is fine. Okay, we've got minimum engine. We also got our research rate buff, which is going to free up a whole load of people. Construction production. I would like you to focus on... Um... Construction rate, yes. And we're going to assign like three labs to this for now. The rest, we're going to go all power propulsion for this one. We're going to go max engine size. Oof, that is going to be 4,000 research points. I don't know whether we can justify that. August of next year. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. If we just keep dumping everyone into that, that's pretty good. Um... Yeah, and we'll slow down our grav sensors because they're not going to be done for a while anyway. Make the grav sensors done. Ooh, that's way too late. September 47. Sure. And our bigger engine will be done June. Okay, an active research facility. You can probably guess where this is going to go. Oh, that's actually going to change the date by six days. Maybe not as worthwhile. We get the Trans-Newtonian cargo shuttles anytime soon, you think? They would be quite useful for our freighters. Nah, we're going to have to upgrade them. That's fine. All right, we made our maximum engine size, which is beautiful. Um, Do we want to go down to power point three? That'll be done in November. And then we can do squadron jump radius pretty quick. Like, that'll be done early 48. We might be able to have our geo survey vessels out just around the next election. Sure, that seems good to me. Let's do this. Oh, hello. There's a fight going on somewhere. Five second intervals. Now, your game can get stuck like this for quite a while sometimes, but that means that they have encountered probably each other. They shouldn't be encountering any of the um, races out in the nothingness. This could last an indefinite amount of time. It could last up till now. No? Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, and the gray has completed orders. Uh, right. How long have you got left? A uh, while. Is it worth sending the Grey up to Sedna and then to Brooks? Like, how far is it to Brooks? Can you actually make it there? I don't think you can make it to Brooks. You can make it to Sedna. Okay, we'll, we'll tell you to go to Sedna. Load a mass driver. Unload a mass driver. There we go. It will take you, like, three years, but whatever. Um, That's fine. It gives you a purpose. Right, we've got graph survey sensors, which is lovely. We do want to start doing our other sensors as well. So we probably actually want to start on our active grav sensor. That's basically like a radar. It's an active sensor, so you'll be pinging out gravity waves and then seeing what happens. It means that people will think it's much more hostile, uh, but it also means you can get like good readings on the size of people's ships and so on. Uh, we're going to just put, like, one onto this at the moment. I just want it on there. I don't necessarily need it now. And then we're going to put the other one into our cargo shuttles, maybe. There's only three days difference. Um, yeah, construction rate. If we can save a year on construction rate, that's a year that we could be building another, what, sixth faster because it goes from 12 to 14. It's a pretty good change. And then engines are going to be done pretty soon. Cool. Okay, we got our minimum engine power, which is lovely. And you'll be done January 
for next year. Cool. Now, we do have everything we need, except for like the faster shuttles, but we can wait on that for our new class of freighters. So, the Grey, uh, you were a good freighter. You did your job, but the times are changing. We're going to do a new ship class, and this is the Future Planet. Um, presumably named after the Galactic Future Party. Future of the planet. Uh, we are using composite armor, as it says there. We can actually click update armor if we wanted to update it, but it obviously it created with the newest armor. We have a fuel storage we don't really care about. Engines. We are actually going to mark this engine as obsolete, which will hide it from us now. We don't need to see that. We are going to need a cargo hold and a cargo shuttle. And then we're going to need an engine. So we're going to go to uh, Space Master mode just so I can instant it. We're going to design a tech. Go down to engine. Improved nuclear pulse engine technology. Uh, we're going to reduce the power all the way to 30%. Notice that being a third of the power means you use a 20th of the fuel. So good. Sadly, we're still in on 0.9 fuel consumption. We will try and get that down to like 0.7 relatively soon after we've done with the jump point stuff. Thermal reduction we don't care about and engine size. We're going to go up to 60, which means the fuel consumption goes down. It doesn't actually go down. It's It will use just as much fuel as an engine of, you know, six times bigger than the 10, but per unit of thrust, it will only use 41% if that makes sense. I explained that very poorly. Uh, we're also going to want to produce a company name. Haley Thrust. Okay, Haley, obviously taking over here from the Vandermeij uh, with the advent of the improved nuclear pulse engine. Uh, 180 EP. And it only uses 3.26 fuel per hour. And it's 3,000 tons. Okay, we're going to instant that. We don't need to get too specific about this. When it's military ships, I will go into more specifics about how fast we're going to be, etc. Uh, we will refresh tech. And we're going to honk that engine on. Now, notice that we only go ever so slightly faster than our previous ship. Yeah. But we also are incredibly good at our range. Like, our range has gone up massively. Like, that's four times the range for a large fuel tank. That's great. Um, do we want to push this even further? Do we want to give it more fuel? Potentially. Um, I kind of like 100 billion kilometers on my freighters. Do we need to do it with this one just yet? No, we can potentially do that at a later stage when we update them. We are going to give it more engines, though. We're going to probably want it to go... A good rule of thumb is 10... Uh, oh, not 10. Uh, 1 kilometer per second. But that requires 5. And we're kind of pushing it by that stage. I think three engines is probably the best. Now, engines cost a lot, um, whereas the build cost. Um, there we go. 27. Compare that to something like our shuttle bay. 20. Compare that to our cargo hold. 50. Okay. Not as expensive as I thought it would be. Uh, 27 galasite. 10, 10. Hmm. It's not bad. Uh, right, so do we want to make the engine bigger? Mm. You know what? Let's push it up there. Let's go to four engines. That means there'll be 12,000 tons of engine on this. About 30%, which is about right, actually. Having about 30 to 40% of your ship the engine is about the right ballpark. I'm not on touch deployment time because that would be dumb. Um, and it should be good to go. It has cargo hold. We could add a second cargo hold. Uh, not cargo hold. Cargo bay. Cargo shuttle bay. And that will load time. Notice it's two days, 20 minutes. Five days. Two days, 20 minutes? Two days, 20 hours. Five days, 20 hours. Um, and you'll see there is a cargo shuttle multiplier there. And we can drive it up to four to get that down to, you know, one day, 10. Um, potentially, that might be something we want to do. And then we can, when we have the Transnewtonians, we can flip this around. Make some adjustments. I think that's a probably good idea. Having it about 40,000 tons is generally what I aim for. Um, that's a lot of cargo shuttle, yes. And the cost is relatively high. But we're mostly pootling around the inner system, which means that the travel time is going to be quite short. The unload time is going to be brutal. 
So, yes, um, I think having the cargo shuttles be this elaborate is fine. Um, we can change that later. We're going to lock the design. Um, we don't need to do anything fancy with it. And we will... Go over to shipyards. And Karen International. I'm gonna have you retool for the future planet. Now there's one thing we do want to do. And that is we want to make ourselves a what's the word? Uh colony ship that can actually move people around. Um I will also mark the gray as being obsolete. Uh, which we can do down here with this. No, that's show obsolete. Oh, here we go. Obsolete. I know it's, there's obsolete there and obsolete there. It's confusing. That's show obsolete. This is make obsolete. So we can make that obsolete. And then when I click off, we should see gray disappear. There we go. Thank you. Um, also, we never use the 40 packs LR. We're going to make that obsolete. And in fact, the 40 packs we're not using anymore. We're going to mark that as obsolete. Um, refresh tech doesn't do it. Okay. Uh, we're also going to make a new ship class. The Sapphire Ebony. You are going to be a colony ship. Um, an engine. And a cargo. Shuttle bay. And then cryogenic normal. And now that, that is done, you'll see cryogenic births 10,000. That's nothing. Like, we need much, much more than that. And this is about the size of a tenth of a cargo hold. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go and make it the same size as the cargo hold. There we go. 100,000. So funny that that's the same size as a cargo hold. You might have guessed correctly. We're going to build this the same as we did the future planet. Now, they're very, very similar. And that's fine. Um, the idea here is going to be basically that they're almost exact copies, except we've switched out the cargo hold. Now, one thing I actually might want to do, I'm, I'm going to unlock this. I can do that because I'm a Space Master, is uh, I'm going to just say, hey, I notice our range has gone down quite considerably. Let's just up that with another fuel tank. It's a bit excessive, but that's fine. And we'll add ourselves a large fuel tank here as well. Uh, lock design. Lock design. You shouldn't really do that because it's locked for a reason. That is that... If we have any in-game, we'll be altering ones that we've already built. Uh, but we haven't built any, and I'm only retooling. And the difference in retooling between this and this with an extra fuel tank is not very much. So we're good. Colony ship, that's great. Uh, I think we are all good. Now, notice that load time is slightly different because it takes longer to actually unload people. Yeah, that load time's a bit high, but whatever. Um, I think with that said and done, we'll close that up come over here and we'll say hey you were producing greys before can you retool um and instead i might need to go forwards in time or reclose <laughs> we're gonna go forwards in time five seconds and it should propagate retool for yeah the sapphire ebony Oof! notice that difference in build cost Ouch. That's, that's going to be a while. Now, because this is the first time we're actually retooled properly, the rest of them have been like instant retools. Because you have already been retooled instantly, this retool is going to take time. And you're going to take until the end of next year to retool correctly for this. Out of interest, Sapphire Ebony. Why are you so costly? I'm going to just unlock it just so I can click on the components. Um, otherwise, it'll complain at me. Yeah, cryogenic is 100 cost each. That's why. But now we've got this done, we're going to go to the future planet. We're going to say, hey, I would like you to build, go to cargo fleet, future planet, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Great. Good job. Done. 
How long are they going to take? Uh, July next year. And obviously we want, I'm thinking, 10 in a fleet. And one of them can go and do the journey to go, hey, I want to go to Brooks and drop that mass driver off that we've been talking about. So the only other thing to check is our research. And that's January. Okay. Time's up. We have ourselves our jump size increase. Um, we want to grab next. Probably the fuel consumption thing. Yes, but we'll want to put much less on this. We're like down to eight now. And this is the point where we're going to start having to think about our military. We're going to start going outside the solar system with this new ship. So we're going to need to start thinking about like defenses. And we're just going to get a smattering of different things for now. Uh, I kind of would like to get a bigger missile warhead. Actually, Haley is the letter at this. Admittedly, her bonus is 1%, but she's our only person, so we do what we can. Uh, the implosion fission warhead. That's our new level of warhead for missiles. We'll get you working on that with, uh, let's say, three people. Energy weapons... Wow! Okay, because we put an energy weapons person in charge of the uh, academy, we have a lot of energy weapons. This was maybe a, a bit too much, but... Peter, lovely to see you. We'll probably want to just get something simple like lasers. You know what? Yeah, let's get a, let's get a laser with a 12 centimeter focal size. Just a little bit of, of basic research here and there. Ground combat. Yeah, we definitely want to start someone looking into ground combat. We literally have no one for ground combat. Okay. Well, we've got a lot of people for energy weapons for some reason. Uh, out of interest. Ashley Dragon Man, Haley, Elf, all 30 percenters. Okay, well, I guess we're going to reassign Ashley Dragon Man. You can be reassigned to ground combat. And you'll have 8%, which is actually reasonable for being reassigned. Sure, ground combat. We're going to start thinking about ground combat stuff just because we will need preparations because we could get attacked at any time. Um, also, it will allow us to take small groups of people to go and, hey, look at Xenoarchaeology if we find that, or look at, um, what's the survey? Geosurvey equipment. Actually do geosurveys on planets that are promising. Uh, we have done the, like, the space survey, but some planets we need to really dig into. Uh, so for this, we're going to work on our troop transport just because we need to be able to move them around. It's the first step. And I think... Getting someone to work on a terraforming module so we can start terraforming planets, maybe? Maybe we leave that until a little bit later. Yeah, leave that to later. We've got two research facilities we can reassign. I think reassigning them to construction rate would maybe be a bit late in the day. Yeah, getting better sensors seems like a good plan. Okay. And with that, we are ready to build ourselves a grav survey ship. However, that's probably best done next episode because that way we can do the actual like, hey, we built a grav survey ship. We'll send it around, have a look at what there is in the solar system. And hopefully we'll find some interesting places and no horrible deadly aliens next door who want to murder us because we don't have a military yet. And if we're going to start poking around, that would be a good idea. Speaking of which, to be able to produce a military, we're going to need a shipyard. So we're probably at a stage where we should reassign some... Oh, 10% on our infrastructure. Yes, they finished the mass drivers and I didn't notice. Yeah, you should be working on, um, I think, naval shipyards. Naval shipyard complex. And we will have, I want to say, three of them built. And you'll be done three years time. So basically one a year. That seems reasonable. Again, if there is anyone next door, we are going to be in so much trouble. But hopefully that will be enough time to actually build something. Even if the weapons will be terrible, we're going to have to improvise.
Now I've been Andrew Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have, you know, like, subscribe, etc. Get involved with the whole interaction and Discord and roleplay stuff. Uh, there'll be a link down below. If you want to figure out, like, hey, what did we do to set the game up? What are our exact settings we're playing? There is a setup video also down below. And if you want to just, like, comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz, it's helpful to the algorithm, and I really appreciate it. So, for now, that's it from me. And I guess... I guess, I, gl I guess it's the Galactic Future Party signing off as well. Stay shiny.